welcome back to the channel, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Bo Biddle. <laughs> What's up, Ben Barber? Dude, what is happening? Uh, what are happening out here? Dude. Uh, uh, we folks, did this. Or... We're here to tell you. Yeah. Cars, as far as you can see, they go all the way around the ring road around here. We got the club area, we got the grass area, there's a paved area. They all came, Bo Biddle. Yeah. And they it, all came. Despite it being like kind of cold and Cold rainy. and rainy, still the masses came. Really, really amazing. And and I want to say sincerely, thank you. Yes, everybody. He, you can see the look in his eye. He was so serious. So much has had to happen in such a short amount of time to get us here. For us to pull this off. Yeah, and so it's it's worked out it's it's happening and i thank you everybody that has come out and uh trusted us and supported us yeah in our new chapter in our new next chapter new place a uh, nice pantera about to drive by here uh well folks we have a couple things that we're going to throw at you in this video it's going to be a little different uh we're just trying to check around the event and see what all cool cars are here what cool people are here so uh let's throw to some of these interviews and just kind of check out what uh what is happening in this lot tell me more tell me a little bit more about this one uh so it's a uh 17 uh obviously gen 2 uh v10 r8 uh boost logic stage one kit uh pretty simple uh it's got twin gt 35 82rs uh dual ball bearing ball bearing obviously the entire kit came from boost logic um, it's got a custom wheel set up, 20 by 9s, 20 by 11s on the, on the rear, 20 by 9s up front, uh, H&R springs, uh, pretty simple setup, makes about right at uh, 800 wheel, a little bit less than that, and uh, just stage one setup, and then after the build, from where we're at now, now we're going to do a fuel upgrade and do a DS1 tune, we'll be at a thousand. I thought you was already at a thousand. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's, what's the biggest change since you twin turboed it? Is it just overall feel, power, response. I know it's more power, of course, but like, if you could go back, would twin turbo still be like, I, like, yeah, of course, it all day long. It drives like a stock car. I mean, it, it rides like a stock car. The power's there when you want it. Super reliable. That's why I chose the R8 in the first place. The R8 and the uh, Huracan platforms are just uh, super reliable, very easy to work on. And uh, ultimately, uh, that's that's the biggest things that are running stuff in the quarter mile um, and the rolling events. Um, so it's a great platform, and you can you can daily drive it if you want to. You would never know it's twin turbo, no issues with it whatsoever. They spend a lot of time designing the car, but also the twin turbo kit, and yeah. uh, that's obviously why I want Boost Logic as well. It's funny because I always hear a lot of people when they talk about buying this type of car, like this type of supercar. It's always they love the Huracan because it's loud and flashy. Right. But no one really wants to daily drive one, technically. Yeah, it's it's a little uh, a little less desirable to drive daily. Um, you know, basically it's the same car from a platform trans motor perspective. Uh, but De Huracan's definitely more flashy. You kind of blend it a little bit more with the R8, but you still got that the same performance. Okay, too. Um, yeah. Sure, awesome, man. Well, everyone, this is Hal. If you see him here at Cars and Coffee, he's at the Granite Garage floor booth. If you need anything for your garage, this is the man to see. Welcome back y'all. So we are out and about again. We've got a new interesting gentleman. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hey, what's up y'all? My name's Adam. Uh, online I'm Y Body Nation or Real Y Body Nation on Instagram. Uh, we got the twin turbo C8 Corvette. This is a 2020. So it is a full twin turbo package. It's the C900 from Sissio Performance. So it's not just uh, not just turbo piping. We got a full intake manifold with secondary uh, E85 injection. Uh, we got a MoTeC ECU. Obviously we got headers running. One of my favorite mods is the Paragon Performance uh, strut tower bars here. Just really cleans up the engine bay. Not trying to crowd it up with too much carbon fiber. Yeah. But um, so it's running two precision 6466s in the back. Uh, with waste gates, blow off valves, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll take you up front real quick. There's a cool, cool thing up here in the front. So once you pop the front, this is where we store the E85. So we got E85 dual pumps to send them up through uh, through the bottom of the car, under the car, up to those runners. 
Um, that is also controlled, that's controlled by the MoTeC. So that goes on up and then whenever you command boost, it actually sprays the E85 on top in the, uh, with the secondary injection. So that's kind of where you get the extra power. Um, we still run, still run 93 in the gas tank. So like when I go to the gas station, I fill 93 and then I have, you know, race gas that I'll periodically fill up the, the three gallon surge tank up there. So, so when are you going to be on this versus that? <laughs> Uh, you know, trying to trying to leverage my way there. You know, we got the Hoonigan vanity plate on there. Try to tag them as much as possible. And uh, honestly, we got to turn the car up a little bit though, because it's it's making about 887 in full boost, um, which is fast, but it's not as fast as uh, a lot of the cars that want to run this. If you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. Uh, it's been good so far. No no real traction issues because we got the bead locks on the, the 18 inch bead locks. Et Street R's on the rear. Not a ton of room for clearance, but gets the job done. And then we also got, uh, we're running 20s up front because we got a aftermarket big brake kit from Brembo. Uh, one of the weak spots on these C8s is definitely the stock brake rotors. Mm -hmm. So I just went ahead and went full send up front. And just oh, did a full ceramic? Big, uh, no, they're, they're still, uh, you know, normal steel, but mm -hmm. it's a uh, six piston. Uh, they're slotted and two piece, so that you actually lose some lose some heat. And then the back, we just upgraded the rotors as well. This is this is probably one of the most common upgrades for people on the C8 is just these gyro disc or gyro disc rotors. Uh, people like to just do those because, like I said, the stock stock rotors on the C8s are single piece iron. They heat up real quick and they warm. Them. But other than that, uh, obviously the car is wrapped, so it's got a it's got two wraps on it. So the original color was uh was this gray mm -hmm. and then uh that's a wrap down in columbus georgia did another wrap on top of it which is this camo you know the custom camo. yeah the blue the blue and black camo yeah this thing is clean man like I, I could definitely say from the first time i saw it with josh to now it's yep. like a lot of subtle upgrades yep but the presence is still the same okay. like the, like when you see it it looks completely different like, it looks way different and then when you find out like when you see the hood pop it's yeah. like oh Oh snap! Like what? Like what? Why? You know, of course there are a couple other t uh, twin turbo ones out there, but all you hear about or all I've heard about is the problems. But every when I talk to you, it sounds like it's all smoothed out. So I love like the that you you taking the time. You yeah. took the time to figure these things out to make it streetable and raceable. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'll, I'll give a shout out to you know Sissio Performance. They built the car. Um, yeah, TK Auto Works, they help me out with a lot of the, the little stuff, like the brakes and the, the headers and all that. But Sissio Performance, they're the ones who figured out the MoTeC. They figured out the clutches with Dotson. Dotson's an Australian company. They do a lot of high-end transmission work. Mm -hmm. um, so Sissio Performance really brought the car together. Um, it hasn't been, you know, with a car that's making double the power from factory and so new, it hasn't been 100% problem-free. But uh, we, you know, we keep open communication. I text them on a daily basis. Whenever I'm driving this car, I have the track. I let them know what's up because this was one of their first customer cars they put out. And so, you know, I feel like I've, I've done a lot of R&D for them and they've, mm -hmm. they've taken care of me. So, uh, you know, we got a, got a good relationship. It's always- It's a, it's a, health, a healthy trade-off, yeah, yeah. a healthy trade-off. No one's losing, everybody's winning. Yep. Yeah, so. and they're cranking cars out. I mean, these C, the C900 kit, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is probably, the best uh the best kit to go with because they they do an 1100 plus kit mm -hmm. that's the built motor yeah um, and so the limiting factor on these cars right now is the transmission mm -hmm. because the transmission still thinks it's a stock car yeah uh, so you gotta you gotta play nice with the transmission to, to trick it to to play nice so yeah um, so trans tuning is not a thing at the moment it is not a it's you can't directly tune the trans so what we do on this one is i actually have a lot of transmission line pressure box installed that they just came out with about a month or two ago okay and so instead of any other older car where you could just command the transmission by tuning it to increase line pressure by 15 percent mm -hmm. this has an interrupter box on it that the motec will then tell or or actually i think it's a manual dial but mm -hmm. You know, I didn't install it, but yeah, yeah. That's uh, all good. basically they have an in the interrupter box that increases line pressure five, 10 or 15%. So pretty much like, like a boost, like almost like a boost solenoid. Yes. Similar. You yeah. know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, it's those kind of solutions that they've had to come up with 
you go ahead and actually get the car to hold the power. Cause, yeah. I mean, you can strap turbos to pretty much any car, but it's, you know, can you can you get the car to play nice and then can you get can you put the power down? So, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's funny though, like no issues with fuel delivery, no issues with, with anything else. It's the dang transmission. Yeah, I mean, that's these, these cars are very smart. So every time I get it back from them, I actually do have to drive it around town, drive it on the highway. Because mm -hmm. you can actually feel the car relearning the tune. It, you can't just rip it right off a dyno yeah. and then take it to the track because I've tried to do that mm -hmm. and it did not go well. The car went into limp mode, but uh, since then I've driven it around town a ton, uh, done a bunch of pulls with it, done a bunch of digs with it, and the car is way happier now that it figured yeah. itself back out. You know? Yeah, the learning. The learning. I remember when they introduced the learning aspect with the newer OBD2 B cars, yep. and it was always confusing because like I've been working on cars before OBD1, pre OBD, and so. It, once they introduced it, I was like, oh man, it's gotta, I reset it now, I've gotta relearn my TPS, I've gotta relearn every, my throw, I've gotta relearn everything, but I can definitely say that it's leaps and bounds from what it was, leaps and bounds. Yep, and then uh, I'm gonna make a claim here, but I think this is the first time they've had a pro charge car and a twin turbo car next to each other. I was at Texas UK, I didn't, I didn't see, I saw a lot of twin turbo C8s there. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any pro charge ones, so. So we'll, we'll talk to him soon. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's enjoying the show right this now. Video, though, too, yeah. Because that's, that was one of the things I was looking forward to today is having both yeah. together. You know? That is beautiful. Like both of these together side by side are, they're eye catching. Like they're, they're so eye catching. They're so nice, yeah. But all right, Alrighty. sign out. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's, uh, you guys can find me on Instagram, Real Wide Body Nation, on YouTube, Wide Body Nation. And, uh, I'm around town, you know, Clarksville, Nashville. You should see this thing popping around. It's in the trailer sometimes, but it's on the street other times. So appreciate y'all uh, featuring it on the, on the channel, and uh, I'll see y'all around. Take it easy. Welcome back, everybody. So we've got another infamous car guy that's out in the scene he's always you're always at these car these cars and coffees right i try to be okay who are you my name is josh vaughn my company is josh vaughn photography what do you drive i drive a 2005 911 carrera s and what what brought you to this car of all like of all the cars that you've shot as well as all the cars you've been around every cars and coffee when you uh -huh. finally made the choice to pull the trigger on something what made you choose this one i've been a porsche guy my my entire life my first car was a guards red porsche 944 so okay. this is the logical jump is the 911 um yeah i've just always wanted one man i lived in germany for three years saw them all the time over there and just fell more and more in love and i've driven just about every 911 now for, for work mm -hmm. and something about the 997 is the right size with a manual transmission it's it's the perfect car it's, yeah it's not the most utilitarian thing for what i do yeah, but it, it, it works because the, the trunk is definitely big enough for what I like, enough for your gear. It's just big enough. Yeah. It's like packing for a two week long vacation where you're flying. You got to be very, very deliberate about what you pack. Mm -hmm. So it's the same for this. Like, I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how I can fit all my gear into the trunk for a full photo shoot. Yeah, so light, it's lighting and C stands are not making it. No, <laughs> I mean, some lights, modifiers is a, is a challenge, but... See, that's, that's a nice that's a nice fit. Yeah. That's a really nice fit. If I can fit two boxes, basically, yeah. and a little bit in the back. Yeah, and, of course, I've got the car seat. For, for my, daughter's, my daughter's three, and she loves riding in the Porsche. She loves going to the day carriage. So. That is a tight fit. <laughs> People, this is not how he rides there. There, it's a completely different thing. You know, scoot, seat scooted up. She's comfortable. He's comfortable. So when she rides, the seat has to go forward. I All the way. The yeah. And then here we have the only modification is the fab speed carbon fiber air intake, and it made a gigantic difference. Mid mid range or low, like as far oh. as like the pickup. More than anything, it's the sound. It sounds incredible. Uh, the sound is pretty muted stock, mm -hmm. but this thing just livened it up, and the, the intake scream is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Norman experienced on the way down here. He, uh, he seemed to like it. So, what's the next step for this this build, this car? Next step, probably an exhaust, mm -hmm. and then maybe some uh, some upgraded wheels. Okay. I didn't like the. Uh, they call these the lobster claws. A little bit of a, a claw look to it. Yeah. I didn't like them at first, but they really brought it. I actually really like them. I feel like they only fit 
this like car. Porsches yeah. and some VWs that are yeah. like on air. Yeah. That's about it. It's it's classic. You know, I, I don't think this this wheel is ever gonna look bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Some There's designs something are, are tried and true. They That's just they just yeah. always say the same. I fell in love with some HREs that are uh, bronze color. I think bronze looks really good to seal gray. So mm -hmm. we'll see. All right, man. So who are you again? Josh Vaughn. My company is Josh Vaughn Photography. I do all things car photography and videography. All right. You guys know where to find them. Link will be in the bio. Ats will be in the bios. Hit them up if you need anything. When you go to his page, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. All right, y'all. Take it easy. The event is still going, right? Yeah. It is still going. <laughs> the still people and rolling. are still up here. We came back up on the hill to see what's going on. It's a couple, about an hour later. Still plenty of people out here. Really, really amazing. Thank you guys so much for your support. But Biddle, you got any kind of comments that you uh, want to kind of break I, out? I, I think I kind of said it. You know, we were so grateful for the support. But uh, outside of that, just bear with us. We have a great starting Spot. This is the first one, guys. So we'll make some adjustments along the way to kind of try to streamline processes uh, and uh, you know make this uh, a better event. So thank you so much. Wait, it gets better than this? Oh, it's going to get better than this. <laughs> just wait. We are just getting started. Dude, he is serious, folks. We are just getting started out here. So big thank you that to everybody that showed up, uh, all the vendors. We really, really appreciate their support in this new transition. Clearly it was worth it right 100 percent. i feel like they all won today uh just like all these people that are on their way out these guys all came and enjoyed a great event still plenty going on so it's amazing new location we're really excited to be here and we cannot wait to continue so for my man bo biddle i am ben barber we will see you guys in the next video